Good evening, everybody. Welcome again to another edition to Demonology Today with Grizzly and Dennis Carroll from coast to coast. Good evening. And around the world, ladies and gentlemen, happy Easter. Hope everybody had a great weekend. How about you, Mr. Carroll? Yeah, it went by very fast. Seems like uh, the older you get, the faster your weeks go. They didn't used to be that way, but that's the way it goes when you retire. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? Uh, it, it seems like it does get that way. So uh, we've got an interesting topic you chose tonight. Uh-huh. Very interesting. Yeah. And it, it's uh-huh. always been on people's tip of their tongue, too, I noticed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Hello, Brenda. Welcome to the show. How's my voice sound, Brenda? I sound like I got a little crackling going on. Do I sound okay? Or is it just me? Oh, yeah. No, it sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Just my, be on my end then. Yeah. Probably blew my sound speakers. All right. Yeah, yeah so we we're going to talk uh, about some uh, black magic Mr. Carroll wants to talk about. Yeah, yeah we're going to be talking about a little bit about that with some necromancy and some other stuff. We're going to get into tonight. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, I'm a, it's a very dark, dark subject. And uh, I think we'll finish up with a prayer when we get through with this tonight because it might be a good idea to, you know, kind of secure ourselves when we get done with these dark subjects. But uh, it's going to get real dark. So get ready. All right. I'm ready. All right. I was going to see if we had any more stragglers coming in here. Maybe they will. They'll show up. So, so anyway, when people uh, say black magic, what's the first thing that usually people comes to mind when they say that, Mr. Carroll? Well, really, they think about like Walt Disney and Fantasia and stuff like kind of like that a little bit, I think. Uh, it, it's the Hollywood spin on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, Holly, the Hollywood spin. The, uh, we call it the woohoo. Okay, that's the yeah, woohoo right. stuff. So really and uh, but uh, you know uh, Hollywood has kind of really messed us up in many aspects, especially when it comes to the supernatural and the paranormal. Um, it's been going on for a long time, not just Walt Disney, but uh, black magic is has its deep, deep roots in a lot of cultures worldwide. Uh, you know, we've talked about Santeria, we've talked about voodoo, uh, the different hoodoo, there's hoodoo, which is a completely different thing. Uh, then look at the, uh, the stuff in the Appalachian Mountains, uh, the mountain folk remedies and medicines and, uh, and, uh, Oh, yeah, uh, there. that's true. Yeah. yeah, it is sort of a, well, I call that, I call that sort of the watered down black magic. It's kind of watered down a little bit. Because really, it has a lot of its basis in medicinal things, herbs and stuff like that, trying to you know help people's health and all that. Kind of like the um, the Native American medicine men, you know. Um, and here I made a statement once. Uh, listen to this: If I were living back in the old days, and I had something wrong with me, and I had the choice between a a Native American medicine man and a doctor, I might would go with the medicine. The medicine man, <laughs> because the doctors, all they knew how to do back then was open your arteries up, bleed you a little bit. Uh, yeah, you might right. get more done. You might get more the medicine man kind of a thing, you know. So uh, and so, folk remedy has its place, and a lot of these people were tagged, unfortunately, as being witches, which they weren't. They were far from that. They were more into folk medicine. But uh, there's another flip side to this too, Chris. Is the superstitious side of it. Uh, and that's where black magic came into play. It's sort of a white black magic. It's kind of a mixture of both. And when I say white magic, white magic is supposed to, terminology-wise, be the good kind of magic, as opposed to the black magic, which is the bad, evil kind of magic. But in my book, all magic, according to its basis or where it comes from, is really not a good thing, whatever uh, label or tag you want to put on it. So it's all steeped in a lot of folklore and superstition in the Appalachian Mountains. You've got what's called the Granny Witches. Uh, that's what they call them. Uh, most of these were the older women that had a lot of knowledge of this stuff, you know. Right. But, uh, but they would do things, too, that we call magic, like love potions, 
and curses and spells and all that. Are you talking about the dark? Are are you talking about love potion number nine? That song? Yeah, yeah, love potion number nine. (laughs) Uh, Ten probably works better. We'll we'll get into that. But anyway, uh, um, the body magic has some uh, some very very deep roots in a lot of religions worldwide. And uh, and actually, you know, a lot of black magic and paganism and stuff like that was brought into the Catholic Church because they couldn't they couldn't deal with it. They assimilated it. They brought it in and said, "Hey, we'll just we can't stamp it out. So what we'll do is we'll try to kind of put a church label on it, kind of a thing, and bring it into the church." And I was talking about that earlier today. That pagan side of Easter and Christmas. Halloween and all that, uh, and we'll we'll have to do a show one day on the holidays. But um, all of that was assimilated into the early church, um, and so you have what's called the mysticism of the church. And you have to be very careful about that. The mysticism is sort of goes over into magic, you know. Like, um, let me give you an illustration. Like, I think I forget which saint it is that you can at you if you lose something. You can uh, write it on a piece of paper and put it under his statue, and he's supposed to dream dream that night. He'll tell you where it's at, kind of a thing. Oh wow! That's really that's really getting into mysticism a little bit, you know. Uh, and uh, the actual word of God kind of frowns upon stuff like that. Uh, although there are such things, and they're very powerfully used, such as prayer cloths, uh, which I have used a lot in house blessings and stuff like that. They're very powerful things. But that is sort of what's called surrogate prayer. In other words, it's an object that you put the prayers on, and you put that object where you can't go, you know, or you can't stay or you can't be there. It's sort of a secondary thing. That is actually allowed in the, in the Bible that is talked about. Paul and Peter did that a lot. So that's not what I'm talking about. Mysticism is when you kind of get over into a little bit of magic. But you're using the saints and you're using religious things to get there, and which is really not good. I think God frowns up on that pretty much. So. But um, the black magic we're going to get into tonight is a lot different than that. That's why I want to start out telling about that, because the, the black magic we're going to be mainly talking about is very evil, very dark. And what it is basically for... Uh, is to do things like the love potion. You can get love. You can get revenge with it. You can get power, money, the man or woman of your dreams, whatever you want to do. Black magic can help you accomplish that. Have you ever, Chris, seen somebody that comes on the public scene out of nowhere? And and I can name some politicians' names, but I won't go there. They just come out of nowhere with plenty of money for no reason. You never heard of them before, and all of a sudden, there they are. Well, I don't know about you, my friend, but I've been, I found it very hard to ever become a millionaire, which I'm not. Right, uh, right, somebody, right. Somebody has to pull some strings for you and do some stuff for you. Sometimes to be that, to get that. And those strings and stuff that they're doing are not good. And the main way to do this All of this black magic is geared to one thing and one thing only. That is demonic power. you got to hook up with the power. Just like you've got to plug in something in your house tonight to get a lamp to come on. you got to plug in to the demonic power, and that's what black magic is. Makes sense. Mm Mm-hmm. And and that's what makes it so very dangerous. And, you know, all through the Bible— the Bible warns about this. Don't let your daughters and sons pass through the fire. There was rituals, fire rituals they did with Baal and all that. The Philistines did it and all this stuff. They keep warning things. There was one king, you know, Ahab and Jezebel. You know this story. Uh, things went very badly because Jezebel was a witch, by the way. And she led Ahab to say, and Solomon, King Solomon, has so many wives, which is really not a good idea. I thought it was a smart guy, but I'm, I have to wonder about it. Sometimes. Anyway, he had a bunch of wives, and some of those wives were not good women. They were very bad women who led him right. down different ways away from God. Actually, that's what the whole thing was. And supposedly, in dealing 
Solomon to have dealings with demons. Uh, and uh, that's why some of the grimoires, I don't know if our people out there are familiar with that term. A grimoire is a book, of, usually a forbidden book of, of knowledge that helps you or teaches you how to call up demons and how to get in, to become in league with demons and to do black magic and stuff like that. Um, of course, now, some witches will argue with you about that because, it's, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, opinionated about that. Oh, we're not hurting anybody. We're just doing certain things. But they are all magic. Okay, it's just like this. I'm gonna, I'll make this bold statement, okay? To embrace one sin, my friend, and to embrace them all, okay? It's not like you can go through the line in a, in, in a, in a delicatessen and pick out what you want. I think I'll do this sin, you know? You intend to embrace one sin is embrace it. Black magic is the same way. If you embrace magic, you're embracing it all to a certain extent, you know? Makes sense. And Makes that's sense. That's the way you got to look at it, you know? But uh, they will argue with you, you know. Now, let, I got to I gotta stipulate something real quick before I get to meet the witches real wild, riled up at it here, okay? Uh, there's a big difference between the pagans and the witch, witchcraft, okay? Paganism is a religion. Witchcraft is a profession. Okay? That's it's good. a profession. That, that, that is right. You are that's right. Why it's called, that's why it's called a craft. It's a profession. Um, so there's a big difference in there. So you can't lump them all together. Cause they'll get mad at you if you do. But you can't lump them all together. It, it categorically lies. You, know? uh, you can't do that. But um, black magic, the main goal of true black magic is to hook up with that demonic power and get what you want from it. So what you're doing is what the Bible strictly forbids people to do is to have engagements with familiar spirits. That's what the Bible's talking about, evil spirits, these familiar spirits. Now, what does that term familiar spirit mean? Your spirit buddy, your your demon guy, your demon buddy. That's what it is. Is that the one and, that sits know, on your shoulder? Yeah. 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 Sort of like a demon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just on your shoulder there, but. But you're you're in league with him, and you get he does stuff for you. But you gotta do stuff for him too. It's a two way street. And and here's the bad part about it, Chris. He wants more from you than you're willing to give him. You know that's just the way that that ball bounces. You understand? That's what's so very dangerous and deadly about dealing with demons. Uh, they always get to the upper hand, and they're gonna shortchange you. They're gonna cheat you. They'll cut your throat when you give them the chance. That's just the way they are. That's who you're dealing with, you know. So, uh, so that's why black magic is very, very dangerous, and it um, and it hooks up to the demonic. So, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give you a quick illustration. Let's say that you and I are witches, okay, and we want to curse somebody to death. We can sit around all day, light black candles, and and say rituals and all that, and that person may never die, okay? I mean, that's just you and me doing that. But if we have demonic power to back that up, you know, if, if the demons have got our back, we might get something definitely done. That's just the way that works. Uh, but now on the flip side, that's like God and prayer, you know? Uh, you pray to God, God's got your six, your back, you get things done. Uh, the favorite prayer of a righteous man availeth much, says the Bible, because you got God on you to help you with that. You know, so we can't do these things alone by ourselves. If it's either good or bad, you know, uh, to really get things done. But like I said earlier about these people that come out of nowhere with a million dollars and come in with prestige. And they come in with uh, the movers and shakers and doing these things. You have to wonder, where did they get that? You know, where did that really come from? Uh, and why? You know? And you've got to look at it pretty hard because some people are in league with the devil. Some people have sold their soul. They, 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 they've hooked up with the club of bad boys. And that's the way that goes. So if you do that, that is the part, the major part 
of black magic. Let me talk a minute about Aleister Crowley. You know that name? Oh, yeah. I sure did. Yeah. yeah. He was the most evil man, supposedly, that ever lived. Of course, he tagged himself as that. I don't know. He, he might have had competition. <laughs> but um, um, he was the beast. He called himself the beast. Well, he often did what was called, what he was always trying to do was called a working. Now, that's a spell. That's another name. Sorcerers call a spell a working. And, what it, and by working, they mean they have to do certain things to accomplish the spell, to get the things the way they want it. And the one thing they do that's part of the formula is hooking up with a mnemonic. Okay. Right. And that's what Alistair, Alistair Crowley was doing. He was also using spiritual energy. He would use the energy of sex trying to get these things done. The, the energy that it's founded in sex, the emotion, the energy, the spiritual connection to it. Um, and he didn't care who it was with or what kind of sex he had either, by the way. But that was his thing. And he was doing what was called the Babylon working. And the Babylon working, which he never really completed, was actually, some people say it was trying to bring the spirit of the Antichrist into the world. But it's already here, I can assure you of that. But he was wanting to hook up with it, I think. That was the main thing about it. And he was using this spell that's working to try to get that accomplished. Um, and uh, by the way, and I might have mentioned this to you before, one of his disciples was L. Ron Hubbard. Ever heard of it? Yes. And another one of his disciples was Jack Parsons. Ever heard of him? Yes. Rocket scientist. Got us to the moon. Yeah. Ronnie L. Herbert founded Scientology, which is a demonic religion, by the way. And you see where yeah. it comes from. You see where his basis begins. Um, by the way, it's an insidious group, too. It's not just demonic. It's it takes your freedom away. So it's, it's one of the very bad, to drink the Kool-Aid kind of a cults. Uh, bad stuff. There's a lot of that goes on in this world, a lot of it. But anyway, I won't get into that now. But anyway, uh, that's where the roots of all this stuff. Look, there you go. You can smell the smoke from black magic. You know, it's there. It's definitely and very strong uh, in its roots. But a lot of this is going on now today, and a lot of it was hidden back in the past. I can tell you about how most of the top Nazis were Satan worshippers. They were into black magic, witchcraft, and stuff like that. They uh, they were into Satanism. Uh, oh, yeah, the Nazis were big into that. And they also had a, a religion called the Real, which uh, was really some people say, was based in demonic teachings, but it was supposed to be an enlightenment, uh, an enlightenment that kind of led people into doing different things, and they said they were actually hooked up with alien entities, which were probably demons, by the way. Uh, they were hooked up with aliens, and they were given information and all that, and Hitler was a big believer, supposedly, in a lot of this stuff. But it was all dark, dark stuff dark sorcery to a certain extent in that way. And uh, and the one thing that this these demons need from you when you try to hook up with them is uh, sacrifice. Blood. They, they want blood. Uh, they're not that bad. Also, they like the destruction of innocence, which is unfortunately why a lot of these young children disappear and are found in these satanic cults. They use these children in their rituals. I've, I've seen some of them. They use these children and they take their innocence from them because that's the way this works. They want to defile and desecrate anything that is innocent um, or childlike or anything like that. And uh, actually, I once knew, and this is, this is all true, very true. I knew, uh, uh, knew of a woman that her and her sister was raised by Satanists, actually born in a family to be raised as actual sacrifices. She tried to save her little sister from it all by offering herself. And when they got through using her, they, they killed her little sister. 
And so she carried that, unfortunately, with her the rest of her life and haunted her. She, I think, uh, I don't know if she ever, uh, she committed suicide, but she died. I can't remember exactly what the details was. But she died haunted by this realization that they were raised by their mother and father to be sacrifices to all their Lord and Master Satan. That's sad. That's really sad. And a lot of children go that route, I'm afraid, Chris. That's where a lot of children disappear, too, in these, in these cults that use these children. Uh, so you've got a lot of this pedo- pedophile stuff connected to that. And uh, and unfortunately, I hate to say this, and I'm not going to name any names. I don't want to get us in trouble. But there are certain elements in Hollywood in the media that have embraced these things. They're into pedophilia. They're into Satanism. They're into black magic. All of it's together. All of it goes together. Uh, and, and now, as you've seen recently, just recently, they're not even bothering to try to hide it anymore. No, it's out in the open. Yeah. And it seems like, ladies and gentlemen, that the ones that are caught red handed mysteriously end up dying. Now, why is that? Somebody explain that to me. I'm listening. They know they have the power. They know they have the power, Chris, and they know they can get away with it. That's what's happening in the world today. Okay. It's like a recent school shooting we had. The person all of a sudden that did this, that did this awful thing, and took lives of innocent people, is the victim. How can that be? I mean, that's just ridiculous. They're not the victims. They're the perpetrators. But yet, but yet the world we're living in now today turns everything around. Oh, they're the victim. You know, they did, you know, there's their life. Even some people call them martyrs. Yeah, I mean, this is getting really. I'm just getting real. You know what I mean? This is ridiculous. But this is the way the demonic works. It turns everything around. What is good is evil, and what is evil is good. That's what Aleister Crowley's motto was. Okay, here it is. This is what he said. He got it on his tombstone. Do whatsoever you would. Whatever you want. That's the motto of the devil. Why not? Who's going to stop you? Mm-hmm. They're not that many more. Don't try it anymore. That's for sure. Once upon a time, it was hidden in the shadows, but it's slowly becoming a mainstream stuff. And uh, and once it does, things will really begin to snowball in. Just wait and see. Uh, all of this is leading up to the spirit of the Antichrist, which is, all, like I said earlier, is already here. He's with us. He is here somewhere. Where he's at exactly, we don't know yet, but he will be revealed. The man of perdition. And this is what his church is going to be based upon, black magic, the real black magic. Uh, I'm going to get into some different aspects of that in a minute. But a lot of these so-called religions... A lot of these cults, that's their basis for this, like the real I talked about and some of these other things, even Scientology and all these things. Look at where they came from. That's what I always say. If you want to know what's going on, follow the money. It'll always take you where you want. Yeah, you don't know know what you're going to do. You know exactly where it's coming from and what you're dealing with. You're right. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't and dispute you know, that. And you know, the Bible talks about that. What is the root of all evil? A love of money. Why? What is the love of money? Without, what do you get with money? Power. Power is money. Money is power. That's that simple. And that's the name of the game. But now I'm going I'm to talk a little bit about the difference in the Satanists and the Luciferians. Now, I think a lot uh, of people not... get confused on this subject. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is confused, and it's meant to be confusing, okay? Uh, that's the way That's the way they work. That's the way this ball bounces, too. But anyway, a Satanist worship their lord and master Satan. Anton LaVey was the member of the 
leader of the Church of Satan, the follower of what's called the left hand path. Uh, he uh, he worships Satan, uh, and Satan is their master, and that's the way that's just pretty obvious and plain. Okay, but when you talk about the Luciferians, things get start and get real muddled up here. Okay, but that's the way they want it. Now, let me throw out what the Luciferians basically are. We know what the Satanists are. They worship Satan. That's their, that's their number one thing. Okay. The Luciferians go about it slightly different. Although their name, won't you listen to the name, Luciferian, which means of Lucifer. What does the name Lucifer mean? Light bearer. The Bible called him. His name, once upon a time, was Son of the Morning. Okay. The morning star. That was him. He was, as I said before on another show we did, this is what God said about him. That you are the most beautiful, the most intelligent, the most perfect thing I have ever created. And yet sin is found in you. The pride of your heart wants to replace me with you. That's what he wanted. He wants to throw down God. This is what he said about God. And you have to understand where this guy is coming from. Okay? This is what he said about God. I will rise above the heights of the cloud. I will sit on the throne of God. And you, God, will be my footstool. And I will be like the Most High. I'll be God. That's what he wants. Um, but the Bible says he's going to go in a different direction. He's got a different fate coming to him. But that's what he wants to be. That's his whole plan. But let's look at that name, Lucifer. It means the enlightened one. Now, these people, these Luciferians, are a prime example of the Illuminati. Remember that term, the Illuminati? Oh, yeah. They exist. They do exist. That's not just some weird, wild conspiracy theory. Evidence was found on them back in the 16th century. They do exist. They still exist. Whatever name they want to give themselves and whatever form they're in now, they still are out there, okay? And they're still pulling the strings. Let's look at one real important passage in the book of Revelation. They talked about the Antichrist. He will meet with the rich men of the world. He will be, these are the Biderbecks and the uh, and all these other big families that Don't have the real money. And all yeah, they, they, they got the real money. They got the real money. What did I say earlier? Money is what? Power, power, power. money. That's, that's it. Well, it says the Antichrist will meet with them two hours and walk out with all of the money in the world. He'll have all the power. They're going to give him the power to back him up, to bankroll it. They're going to give him what he needs, the power to do what he can do. Uh, that's that's where you're coming from. That's the love of money thing, right? because it's power. It's all connected to that. So that's where the Luciferians really join up with the Illuminati, because here's what the word Illuminati means, okay? The enlightened ones. What did I just get through saying? The name of Lucifer was the Enlightened One. The Illuminati are the Enlightened Ones with it is. And here's what their philosophy is. We are better, richer, more powerful than anybody. We know what's best for humanity. So basically, if I'm gathering you right, and <laughs> I'm going back and looking at things, are we talking about the New World Order? Definitely. Or the reset, the great reset that's coming, whatever you want to want to call term, it. You want to call it. That's what it is. And and look at the tie-in between the Illuminati and the Luciferians. Now, here's what the Luciferians believe, okay? Now, get ready. Hold on to your hat here. Once upon a time in the Garden of Eden, God did not want to let us have knowledge. Okay. He said, right. don't, let them eat the, don't let them eat that tree of knowledge. They'll, they'll be like God. And then Satan comes along. Lucifer says, oh, come on. Eat the fruit. You'll be like God. You'll know everything. You'll be on equal footing with God. You can you know, tell him where to go. 
<laughs> that's just, that was his attitude. Okay, so they had of the fruit and they got that knowledge. Remember, they, they went and hid and God said, why are you hiding? And he said, because we're naked. And God said, who told you that? You were innocent. You didn't know that. And he knows something. God knew then something, of course, had been going down on the bad side of things. And that was Lucifer. And here's what the Luciferians say. God was really the bad guy. He didn't want us to have knowledge. He didn't want us to be like him. He wanted to keep us suppressed. He wanted us to be the what? Victims. He you wanted know what? us to you take are the... absolutely right. You know, that that just blows my mind when you said that because the other day I I I'm that that's that's something else. Yeah. All right, let me say yeah. this. Yeah. The Luciferians say Lucifer is the good guy. Because he wanted to what? Enlighten us. He wanted us to be woke, okay? <laughs> That's it. He wanted us to, to have the knowledge, no matter how badly it affected us. And yeah. Uh, so God's the bad guy. Lucifer's the good guy. But now here's where things get really strange. The Luciferians will say that's all just a symbol. It's not real. None of it's real. There is no God. There is no Satan. It's just us, and we are our own God. I wish that was the case. That's the Luciferians. So trust in man, because there is no God, there is no Satan, there's nothing. Trust in us. We're the gods. Huh. And I've actually seen, and that's the New Age philosophy, okay? Here's the New Age philosophy, and why people have to be very careful about this. The New Age philosophy is this. You and I, Chris, are our own gods. God wants us to be God, too. He's okay with it. So we're our own gods, so we don't need him anymore. Well, that doesn't make sense. But that's what they believe. Well, you know what? You know, what, 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 I'm, what I'm really stuck on, ladies and gentlemen, is that I've been hearing this, we are called the enlightened ones for the past six months. We have the knowledge. We want to give you the power. We want exactly. to enlighten you. And that's why the well, Antichrist that's the message, Chris, of the Antichrist when he comes. I may not be here when you hear it. I hope you're not here either with me. I okay? hope, I hope, I'm not either. I hope I we're gone. I hope we're gone. But here's what he's going to stand up and tell the people of the world. Worship me. I am God. Take my hand. Believe in me. Trust me. And you, too, will be a God. The same spiel that he gave Adam and Eve in the garden. Okay, same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, now, did you actually understand everything that we just said? If you don't comment out there, because I, I, it, it, a light bulb just went off in my head. So basically, these people out here that are calling them the enlightened ones have now portrayed themselves the real doers are what they're actually are doing out there, but they're labeling themselves just a little differently. So they're not saying what they really are. And here's the sad thing, Chris. They don't realize it. They've been fooled by the master of deceit. They've been fooled. They are his children and they don't even know it. Unbelievable. That's it. And that's all tied in with the black magic. Because that's what it says. Look, okay, black magic says you can do things with your mind. If you believe hard enough, you can move things. You can you can communicate with people without a telephone. You can see things and all that. What are you trying to become? You're trying to be a god. Okay, that's what black magic is trying to sell you. You too can be a god. But you know what was the number one commandment? Tell me right quick, Chris. What is it? Ah, I'm stuck on the light ones. They I'm shall sorry, not, not that kill. I shall have no gods before, before me. me. That's right. That's right. I do apologize. You can't put yourself. 
you can't put yourself between you and God. That's a big no no. <laughs> but that's what he's selling. That's what he's yeah, sold in yeah. the Garden of Eden. He said, Come on, Adam and Eve, eat this fruit. You'll be what? Like white God. Like, like a God, yeah. Because you're going to have the knowledge. Uh -huh. Huh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, ain't that something that kicks you in the rump? But that, makes you, now. that makes you dumbfounded, doesn't it? It made me it dumbfounded. Is, it, it's something. It is, it is, it is real murky, and they want it to be that way, don't you think? What is another name for the say, for saying the author of what? Confusion. He yeah. wants to confound people. He wants to confuse you. He wants to get you so. And I've seen people under the under demonic influence would say, "I got to get out of here. I can't even think straight anymore. I don't. I can't even know. I don't even remember my name." They had to get out. They were so confused. And that's the way he wants to get you, see? That's the way he wants to work on you so that he can fool you into believing things that are a lie. I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen out there, don't buy the lie. Don't buy the lie because if you do, if you believe the lie, you will be what? Damn. I'm sorry, but that's it. Well, we're already being... I mean, every day we see it on the news. We're we're being fed lies. The politicians, mm -hmm. the people in government, the people in churches, the false prophets, the people mm -hmm. that are That's preaching. I mean, rumors and rumors and lies run rapid everywhere. Look at the look at the social media, Facebook, and all the rest of them. Oh, you don't know what's real and what's oh, not real man. anymore. Hell That's the way man. they want it. But Chris, that's the way they want it. See, well, you don't know what's real anymore. You know, and you know, I've had people come up to me, and I, this is true. It's sad. I said, I don't even know if God's real anymore. Now, now, wow, well, that, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, but it won't. That's the way. That's the way your adversary, who goeth about a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, that's the way he will eat you up. He will feed you the lie. If you buy the lie. That's what he wants. He's going to sell it to you. Definitely. He's the number one salesman in that in that category. Um, and black sorcery, black magic is all mixed up in this. It just comes in another name. We don't call it black magic anymore. We call it social consciousness. Ladies and gentlemen, are you paying attention? Because I know I am. And I wasn't looking at this angle for Mr. Carroll's. I was going into this from a different point of view this evening. And like light bulbs are going off in my head, like ringing bells and flashes of light switches off and on. And thinking, how ignorant can I be all this time? And how blind can I be with blinders on like the horses? That's wild. I'm going to tell you something, Chris, okay? And, and and I'm not getting down on psychics out there, okay? Because I have known some psychics that are really good people. These people have been given gifts, I think, from God. But you've got to watch out for some of them, though, because their, their gifts come from somewhere else, okay? But I'm now talking we, about... Now, we I'm talked talking about, about this God. before. I'm, I'm talking about... God, I'm talking about godly people here, okay? They are using their gifts the right and good way. You know, God gives us all gifts, whatever they may be. And he wants us to use those gifts or he wouldn't give them to you. You know what I'm saying? Right. But some some people are getting gifts that come from somewhere else. Okay. You got to be very careful who and what you're dealing with. Okay. Like I told you before, I had a conversation one time with a psychic. And it's kind of sad that people can be fooled so easily this way. But, you know, uh I asked her, I said, uh, where are you getting this information at? And she said, oh, well, my spirit guide tells it to me. My spirit guide gives me. I said, well, who is your spirit guide? Where does he come from? What is he? She said, well, I don't know. He's my spirit guide. I said, well, who told you that? She said, my spirit guide told me. Well, what does that mean? I mean, did it come from the the ramps of hell? I mean, he could tell you anything. He was probably lying to you. Who he was? He probably was really a demon. I'm gonna tell you something about the demonic. They have preternatural knowledge. We've talked about this before. They have immense intelligence. They have 
and mints out there are millions of untold years old. They've been around, they've watched and learned everything. They can speak languages that we are completely unknown to us, the language of angels and everything else. They have immense intelligence. They can fool you very easily. Trust me, they will. They can do it. And if you want to buy the lie, they'll sell it to you, like I said. If you want to believe it, they'll give it to you. I mean, that's what that poor woman, I said, that, that spirit guy could be anything. Don't you understand? You can't take his word for it. You need proof. What he really is. And you know what does the Bible clearly say? And it's a very strong, important message here. Try the spirits to see whether they be of what God or not. That is true. So people are being fooled every day, Chris. They're being led astray. They're being sent down the wrong dead end roads. And, they, and, they, and here's, the, here's the bad thing about this, okay? I'm going to say this, and I know this is going to sound bad. I'm not trying to be dramatic. But Satan will send you to hell, and you'll go laughingly down to hell thinking it's a great idea because he sold you that idea. Okay. Oh, and I, unfortunately, no, I, I believe that. That's, yes, I do. That's the I, way I it works. That. That's the way it that. works. Yeah, you, yeah. Now what? Now what? What was the name of that movie? Ghost Rider, where he sold his soul to the devil to save his dad's life, and his dad ended up dying anyway. Uh -huh. Remember, uh -huh. and uh -huh. the devil, the yeah, devil came yeah, back to claim his soul. Remember, Ghost uh -huh. Rider wasn't it the movie? Well, here, here's what I'm gonna say this. Okay, and I've had a lot of people ask me this question. I'm gonna get back to Black Magic here in a minute. I've had people ask me this question a lot. Can I sell my soul? Yes, you can. It's not a commodity, though, like, you know, a, a loaf of bread. Uh, you, nobody can steal your soul, okay? Even Satan can't trick you out of your soul. you got to give it to him. You understand how that works? You're the one that's got to hand it over. And how do you hand over your soul for whatever it is you want? You hand your over your soul by throwing your lot in with him, okay? You, you sell out and go with the bad, the bad side of the force, if you want to talk in Star, Star Wars terminology. You go with the bad side, like Darth Vader. You sell your soul. That's how you sell your soul. You hook up with them, and you turn your back on God. Okay? Now, I'm not going to say that you can never get it back right, because I've seen some people that did. But it's very, very rare that you could ever come back from that point of no return. Because the further into that spiritual quicksand you get, the deeper you will go. And that's the way it works. That's the way it's, the trap is set. You understand? And you know who said it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh. So, wretched famous. So, we can go through politicians. We can go through actors and actresses. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something, Chris. Okay, it's very important to remember. We need truck drivers. We need doctors and lawyers, mechanics. We don't need basketball players and movie stars. What do we need them for? <laughs> they don't help us. They don't do anything for us. They might entertain us, but I'm saying, well, but I mean, you know, the real people out there, the truck drivers, they bring your food. The doctors and the, those are the real deal. Okay. Okay, but that's the way the media sells itself. You need us. But we really don't. You understand? We can live without football players and baseball players. We don't need those. Really, we don't. Although they're for entertainment purposes, I understand that. But they, but that's the way these things are. Look, once upon a time in this world, you could go in a department store and they would advertise something for sale. Okay, and you would say, well, I don't know if I want that or not. Now, though, they advertise it. You need this. You got to have this. You Blue can't light special on all five. Blue light special on all five. It's going on now, ladies and gentlemen. All five. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, you got to have it. You got to have it. Yeah, so that's the way they sell stuff nowadays. See, you can't live another day without it. That's it. You got to have it. 
And uh, and our younger generation is especially hooked on this. Really bad. Uh, because they believe the advertising. They believe the media. They believe Hollywood. They believe the sports people. They believe all this because they're buying the lies. And there are lies all around us every day. It's very much like, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, They Live. You remember that movie, Rowdy Rowdy Popper, where he puts on oh, the sunglasses? Yeah, 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 and he yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so weird. You know what? I have to shake John Carpenter's hand for that movie because he got darn close to the real truth with that, okay? <laughs> I mean, if we could put on the real glasses and really see what's in this world, the lies and the rumors and, uh, and all this that's going on around us, we would be absolutely shocked. We, it would blow our minds. But we're in the day, day and in constantly. This is hitting us. Wave after wave after wave. It's almost a form of brainwashing, and I think it is. That's another part of it. Well, we'll that's for another show sometime. We'll get into that. But let me get back to black magic a minute. There are other forms of black magic that are very deadly. Necromancy is one of them. Necromancy is sorcery con dealing with the dead. Okay. And uh, tonight I'm going to make a statement that's going to blow your mind. There is really such a real thing as demonic reanimation of the dead. Now, explain Did you hear what that to I, me. Yeah, that's a long title. That that's a long time, but it's demonic reanimation of the dead. Let me tell you something. Here we are at Easter. One of the greatest things that ever happened in this world was Christ rose from the dead on the third day. He went to hell, you know, and preached down there. But he came back, and he now has the keys to hell and death. Okay, he won. He, he conquered. The battle, the war is over. The battle will still go on. But the war is over. He won. Uh, somebody asked me that the other day. Said, I don't know how this is all going to turn out. I said, I do. I read the book, and we win. Okay? And then, <laughs> but anyway, um, make a long story short, God brought him up from the dead. Okay? And I've heard people say, well, God's the only one that can do that. Uh, 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 not necessarily. Okay? Not really, because the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever name you won't give him, the adversary, he can do it too, but he does it for all the wrong reasons. It's just simply for show. It's not long lasting. It's not the thing. It's not the good thing that Christ did. And other people came up from the dead. Look at Lazarus. He came back from the dead. Uh, look at the little girl that Elijah brought back and the little girl that Jesus brought back. The day that Jesus was uh, sacrificed on the cross, uh, when it was done, people rose from the dead. I don't know, you know, a lot of people don't talk about that, but there was a small resurrection that day. Okay? And people huh. were seen walking around that had been dead for years and years and years. Uh, and, and because it was part of the plan of God. It was the movement and the power of God. And we were talking earlier today on another program I was doing about the Shroud of Turin, which I believe may be a very real thing. I don't know. But if it did, if that image on the Shroud of Turin was that, I call it resurrection radiation. It had to have that kind of effect when he rose up. And you know, the Shroud is mentioned in the Bible. Uh, when, he, when they went to the tomb that morning, and an angel met him, and he said, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is risen. He's not here. And said they looked, and the grave cloth was folded up laying on the ship. Okay, it might have been a child of Turin Paul, we know. But anyway, the interesting thing is, God can do that. God has that immense power to bring back the dead. Think about that statement for a minute. But the devil has that ability too, although it's not as powerful as God. But he has that for his own nefarious purposes. But here's how he does it, okay? It's not like what Jesus came back in a glorified body. We all know the story, the Easter story. He came back, and he was Jesus. But when you come back from the devil, it's nothing but a demon, and I'm reanimating that body. Okay, let's, let me put it this way. If Dennis Carroll dies, and the devil brings me back from the dead, it won't be me. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead and shoot me, because it won't be me. <laughs> it, it will be a demon 
in me, okay? That's the way the demon, demonic reanimation works, okay? That's the vampire. You know, the vampire, the very classic vampire, is really a demon spirit in a dead body. Okay? That's what it is, basically. And that's what, it, and this stuff is real, folks. Okay, that's real. Let me tell you a quick story. You remember Hurricane Katrina? Very bad hurricane yes. in New York. Yes, I remember that. Well, they had, they had to go. A uh, sad thing you have to do after the hurricane was through. They had to go and find the dead bodies. You know. And they went house to house to house. And see, you know. And if they found the body, they would mark a big X, red X out on the wall with paint, you know. So there's a dead body inside. Well, they come to one house. This is a true story. They come to one house, and it was a voodoo house. I mean, it was all kind of voodoo, witchcraft, black sorcery stuff in this house. And said in a back room on the wall was the body of a dead woman chained to the wall. Okay? Right. And they walked up and they looked, they examined this. This woman was dead. Well, there's no doubt because the place had been flooded, she, you know. But she was dead. Okay, dead, dead, dead. And she said, while they were standing there talking, said that the head of that woman lifted up and she laughed at him. Yeah. And, head, and then her head went back down and that was it. So these things are real, people. This is how the power of the devil, but it's not the good power like God is. Uh, God will resurrect you to life eternal. Satan only raises dead people with demons in them. Okay. That's it. That's the way that goes. But wow. that is necromancy. That's necromancy. And a lot of necromancy has to do with the dead whispering. You ever heard of that? Yes. They actually, you perform a ceremony over a dead body and ask it. I'm not going to get into what you do. And you ask it a question and put your left ear down to its mouth. And it's supposed to whisper your answer to you. These are all different kind of rituals that you fool around and mess around with bodies of the dead. The Bible strictly prohibits you from doing that, and especially from talking to the dead. Why? Because really, that's not a dead person talking to you, okay? What is it? It's a demon. It's a demon and having in there talking to you, okay? So don't let it fool you. But that's all black magic. So black sorcery, necromancy, sorcery with the dead. Bad stuff. So you have different kinds of black magic and black sorcery uh, for different purposes, but it all comes from one central location. Hell. Well, of course. Norma, what's going on out there? You got anything you want to add to that? Because you're out there chattering about Nazis and bloodlines and reptilians and serpents and extraterrestrials all at the vatican's now do i think they are there yeah, probably i'm not a conspiracy theorist by any means but there's things in the vault that we cannot see we shall not be known what exists that's thousands of years old yes i do believe that so i'm kind of speechless because that's well, the only thing here, I've been hearing lately is the enlightened ones. We are going to enlighten you. It's and time give to get you woke. The power. Yes. Get woke. The awakened woke. ones. Woke means what? A life. To be enlightened. Yeah. Interesting. Ladies and, and the great reset. The great reset's coming. Let me explain what the great reset is, which is going to all be part of the Antichrist thing. Okay. The Great Reset is basically this. We're all going to get woke. We're all going to go green. You know, we're going to do the environment and all this. And here it all comes down to one thing. And here's what the motto of the woke enlightenment is, the, the Great Reset. Okay. That means when everything's going to be changed for the better, believe in nothing but humanity. Well, that's what they're selling you every time you yep. buy an electronic car. Uh -huh. Some manufacturers are saying they're not even producing any 
fossil uh-huh. fuel cars. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it's not fossil fuel. Uh-huh. Don't get me started on that. That's a rabbit hole. It's not dinosaurs. All right. So how can you tell me that I have to buy me a battery operated car when 97% of the United States, you can't plug the damn thing in. And then you're going to charge me ten or twelve thousand dollars to have a, a plug installed at home. And look at this a minute, Chris. They don't really have to quit pumping oil and putting oil and gas in cars. All they need to do is take turn their science around to the engine and make it more cleaner, burn better, more efficient, and then you wouldn't have to worry about electric cars. You understand? Well, sir. No, no, that's too far. <laughs> See, that that here's what happens when that that's free that's free will they don't want that they want to use the screen stuff for the reset norma i hate power. to tell you this i'm sorry mr carroll for cutting you out norma we had electric cars back in the 1950s somebody fact checked me on that and it was a taxi cab company and they would pull up to the service station and they would pop the hood and they would get these big batteries out and exchange them and put the new batteries in and they would take off. I'm the, 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 yeah, the, it was in the 50s, I believe. 54, yeah. 57 or something. Now, there was also a gentleman that made a car that ran off water. Yeah, yeah, water. Yeah. And he mysteriously disappeared and so did his vehicle and all of his plans well we have the uh, hydrogen engines chris we yes. have hydrogen. i mean it, but i'm just saying if they would go that route but see the electric car thing is just part of the agenda to enslave us a little bit more that's all you know what? Since you said that, and I don't mean to get on on any sidekick, I know what we're here for, you know. But why in the world would you tell somebody overseas to quit pumping oil a half a million barrels a day just to jack up the United States prices of gas? Now, why would somebody do that? I know this is the wrong show to bring that up, but a stupid you know, thing. It I know, is. right? Well. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, they're trying to make us the victim. That's all. That keeps us enslaved. As long as you're my victim, and I and I can get you to believe you're the victim, I can get you to do anything I want you to. And so, we're we're dumb what, enough, and we're, we're we're paying for it every time, ladies and gentlemen. We yeah. are the victim. We go to that gas pump, no matter how much it is, and we pay for it. We don't say a damn thing. Am I mm-hmm. right? That's the truth. Same thing and that's the way the they people want in, in the White House. We bitch, bone, and groan, right? But we don't do a damn thing about it. Exactly. And that's what it's all about, the power. And uh, and uh, here, and let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, God is love and freedom, okay? And, you know, you got to have, you can't have one without the other. You got to have both together. Uh, yin and yang, yin work. and yang. But Satan, your adversary, whatever name you want to call him, I call him Lucifer because that's who he really is. Uh, he doesn't want that. He wants hatred and enslavement. That's what he's all about, okay? He wants you to be a victim. He wants you to suffer. He wants you to be beholden to him. And he wants you to, to rule over you. Don't let him do that. And he will sell you a lie to do that. He'll get you to believe anything he wants you to believe. If you'll do it. If you'll believe it. But you got to remember, this is your adversary. He doesn't want anything good for you. God loves you. He wants everything good for you. He wants you to be free and happy and well. But then Satan wants the complete opposite. And he'll, he'll do anything to get his will. He'll do anything to do what he wants to do. And he doesn't care if he destroys you in the process, because that is the very nature. We must never, ever forget the very nature of true evil is self-destruction. It destroys itself, and it'll take you with it. That's just the way it works. You know, Mr. Carroll, I can say one word, and I think Norma, Brenda, and whoever else is watching 
or probably hate me for saying this. But doesn't that sound like the old Biden and Obama administration? Oh. I know that's the wrong show. But the more and more you talk, self-destruction. Boy, I think I'm, we're going to get censored off YouTube. Well, look at, uh, look, at, look at the present political atmosphere today, okay? It's the worst it has ever been in our lifetime, or any lifetime for that matter, Rob. But look at this. They're letting criminals out on the streets to rape and rob and kill. They're not putting them into prisons anymore because, oh, they feel so sorry for them because they're victims. You see the mentality? Oh, the criminal's the victim. He's not the perpetrator. You know, uh, if he's going to break in the night and rapes your wife and kills your kid, he's a victim. Uh, we got to feel sorry for him. Yeah, there was a case, there was a case, (laughs) there was a case, and I don't remember what year, somebody fact-checked me, I love my fact-checkers out there in La La Land, there was a Georgia case where a prowler, you remember back in the homes where they used to have those skylights on top of the roofs? Uh Now, I'm going to make sure y'all hear me loud and clear when I say this story, so I'm going to put the mic in my face. There was a prowler on top of the house, one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Didn't know there was a skylight. Stepped on it. Fell through it. Landed on the woman's bed. Broke his leg. Sued her. And won. Now you tell me what is wrong with that picture. Let me tell you something, Chris. Somebody breaks in your house tonight with an axe. going to cut your head off. And you shoot him and kill him. Who's the bad guy? You are. You are. You are. You kill that poor guy. <laughs> Why didn't you shoot him in the But, but let, me, let me let me tell you him? something. Let me tell you something right now, and I'll stand behind this one hundred percent. It is your God given right to defend yourself. But they don't even want you to have oh, that. Oh Lord, we just open up the floodgates right there, Mister Carroll. That's Woo. one can of worms, there, Chris. Yeah, I th- I, th- I, th- I think we just topped it off right there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's sad, ladies and gentlemen. It, I, I usually don't talk politics on the air, but uh, the light ones, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, what's your well, you know, on? Here's something we need to remember. Not every conspiracy theory is a conspiracy theory. Some of them are right. Some of them are true. Some of them are real. Okay. Uh, That's the main thing that worries me. (laughs) Some of them are real. Yeah, that's that's the problem. You're you're absolutely right on that. I mean, there's no other way to take it. You know, I mean, some of them are way far out there, but then then they become reality. And we we thought they were not. And they come to pass. So what do you do? Uh So, yeah. Yeah. but uh, and all behind all of this, the black magic is going, the 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 devilment, the devilment that's going in behind it, and the shadows. All of this is behind our government. It's behind our media. It's behind our entertainment, our schools, our churches. Don't think for one minute that you know the devil goes to church every Sunday. I'm sorry to say it, but he does. And he's got his people there. Okay, he's got his people in everything. Okay. Um, he doesn't have to have demons working for him all the time. He's got people cooperating with him. I'm sorry to say that. They have sold out humanity. And like I've made that statement before, a lot of people say, oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. But it's true. There are things out there walking around. They look human, but they're not. And there are humans walking around that are no longer human. So Norma just stated, Trump tweeted today in all caps, war, well, war three. Something. What does that mean? War. War is a tool. In other words, war can be utilized to grasp more power. Let's just say tomorrow something bad goes wrong. Let's say Russia takes one of our planes down. NATO jumps on them. World War Three begins, and it probably has already started. It's just very slow about it. But let's say the war begins tomorrow. Who is going to wield the power then in this country? You can have martial law then. 
you can really clamp down with the power more so than uh, any virus could do. Okay, yeah. or any pandemic. Yeah. So there you go. It, 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 I do remember there were certain people, and I'm not going to, you know, when COVID first started, they rubbed me, oh, this is what we've been waiting on. They said that. I think it was actually predicted, wasn't it? In the news. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think they actually had video or media clips. I think yeah. three to five years prior they were playing this it. This is what we've been waiting on. Yeah. Meanwhile, millions of people are dead, but it was there to their advantage. It's never to your advantage. Always remember that. It's to their advantage. But what is real? That's the problem. Uh-huh. You know, was that the Chinese spy balloon, really, or was it our balloon? Unfortunately, too, like I said, a lot of these rumors, and you know, the Bible said that. Jesus said there will be wars and rumors of wars. So we know they're coming. Uh, so get ready for it, because that's what's coming. And the, re- the Great Reset, and, it, and, and, and you know, it sounds like a great idea. Oh, God, we're waiting on that. Day, we're having- no, 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 no. That's a bad thing. It's a bad thing, because, ladies and gentlemen, any time mankind does anything, no, I don't care what it is. If he ties his shoelaces or if he tries to implement a worldwide policy, no matter what he does, it always screws it up. It's always going to come out on the bad side, and you're going to be the loser. Yeah, yeah, you're right on that. CVCDC, what that? What, 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 what the heck CVCDC is? What's that thing? I, I don't know what that is. But it could have something to do with... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what those initials stand for. Uh, I hope it's nothing bad I just said. I don't know. So, but that's the uh, black magic that's going on in the world today, and it's and it's being performed right in front of our eyes. I call it sort of like a game of mirrors and smoking mirrors, like the illusionists used to do to make the uh, Statue of Liberty disappear and all that. And he really didn't do that, but he looked like it. And that's what's going on. They can. Here's another thing that you got to really worry about, Chris. Uh, while they got your attention over here, you're not seeing what's going on on the other side. Over here. That's the way they want it. They want to draw your attention to certain things so that you don't see what else is really going on. That's the bad thing. And we need to all try to be more aware of what's going on around us and investigate things deeper and research things more and understand things and not buy everything that they said. You know what Edgar Allan Poe said, one of my favorite quotes, believe nothing that you see in half of what you hear. What you hear, yeah. That's so true in the world, in today's world, definitely. But that's what black magic's all about, to fool you, to, 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 to trick you, and to believe in something that's not true, and it's all part of their power plan. That's all it is. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I've been fooled. I think we all have. I do. So, I mean, what are we going to do about it now? So, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, you're awful quiet out there. But it just goes to show. What happened? We're ready for, hit us with some questions. We're ready. Yeah, what Norma CB C C B D C is the mark of the beast. I never heard that. Exactly right, Uh-oh. Dennis. Digital. Oh, the digital Uh-oh. bank. Uh-oh. The uh-huh. the sensor or, or the or the where it moved. Well, uh that that I'm gonna tell you another modern day black magic, okay? Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. It has it, it has two initials. A I now, did you see my face on that? Now, they estimated 300 million jobs it's going to cost. Now, they're saying over 625 million. Now, they, now, last time I heard, now, I'm not, now, correct me, ladies and gentlemen, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But out of the four AIs they created, the last time I read, they had to terminate three of them and shut down the fourth one. Because the first oh. one did not like the humans the way we were living. The second ones didn't like the way we were treating each other. The third ones wanted to control the nukes. And the fourth one wanted to take control of the world. 
Well, I want to give you a Bible quote that, that runs directly to AI, artificial intelligence. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. And he shall cause him to worship the image of the beast. Now stop and think about that a moment. The image of the beast. What is the image? I used to think it was my big television, you know, computers, some of that. But now I've got a different spin on that. The image. Okay, man has always, Chris, tried to play God. That's what we got through talking about earlier. You can be God too, okay? We can all be gods, okay? And when I checked, I checked with God and he says it's okay, all right? Uh, yeah, all right. Spiel. That's what they want to sell you. That's what they want to sell you, okay? But, but listen to what I'm about to tell you. God made man in his what? In his image. Male and female made he them in his image. Very plainly says that. So now man has to make his, his, his man being, has got to play God, and he's got to do the same thing God done. So he's going to make something in his image. What is that? What is that? Yeah. It's AI. It's AI. That's what it is. Well, there has it's been the, rumors. There has been is, rumors that this these is direct, billionaires. This is direct blasphemy of God. There has been rumors that billionaires and trillionaires have cloned themselves. Oh, yeah. To well, harvest buying, organs. That is buying, Chris, and we'll talk about this on another show sometime. This is fascinating stuff. But you can buy your own, if you've got enough money, you can buy your own immortality. You can buy your own immortality. This is another kind of black magic, okay? But this is dark science. Dark science and black magic are an alchemy. They both go together, by the way. And we'll do a show one night on dark science. That'll blow your mind. Anyway, if you can clone yourself, you got all the parts you'll ever need. You'll never die. Something wears out, your heart wears out. You just get it from your clone because it's your heart, really. It's going to fit perfectly. So if you need kidneys, heart, lungs, whatever, a liver, you're okay. You're set. You are immortal. Well, aren't they trying to upload their memory into AI? Well, let me tell you what makes a God a God. A God has to be what? Perfect, but he also has to be what? Immortal. They're playing the God game. That's all it is. Joey Z is asking you right now, Mr. Carroll, please do the Dark Science Show next week. Yep, I'll do it. All right. All right, Joey Z, you got it. Now, Dark I got to do some homework on this one. Dark Science. <laughs> now, this one I do not know about. Okay. Yep. Now, we're dabbling in the field what Grizzly does not know. So, I will have to do some research. All right. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is real stuff, and it's actually scary. It's mm -hmm. people are so out of time. Well, okay. Out of whack. Let me tell you something, Chris, okay? The yeah. greatest fear, the greatest fear is a fear of the unknown. But once you know what it is you're facing, then you can get a handle on that fear. And I'm not trying to make people fearful here tonight, and you're not either. We're no. trying to give people we're trying to give people knowledge so that you'll know what's going on in this world and you can power handle Power is it knowledge and, and knowledge it. is power. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And if you can get a handle on it, or as the cowboys used to say, get a leg up in the saddle, you're ready to ride. That's right. You know? That's right. But you know what, though? It, it's just we are so tied up with social media. We are so tied up with what's on TV. We're so tied up with what's being told to us and fed to us. You're right, Mr. Carroll. What is reality anymore? You know, the president 
somebody told me the other day, do you realize it took him four months for him to make his first speech? And that one of his speeches, his hands went through the microphone. And I was like, are you serious? Well, let me tell you go this. back and watch it. Let me tell you this, Chris. The one casualty of this unreality thing that seems to be going on around us is, is the truth. That's the one casualty of it. You know, 2,000 years ago, one man stood condemned before another man, Pontius Pilate. And, Pilate, and he told Pontius Pilate, he said, if my kingdom was of this world, my followers would fight for it. And he said, why would they fight for it? He said, because I know the truth. And Pontius Pilate said something very strange. What is the truth? What is the truth? Well, Satan, the darkness, wants to confound you and confuse you to the point where you don't know what the truth is anymore. That's what they want. They are enemies of the truth. And that's what they want. And that's the whole goal of the God game. Well, I'll be honest with you. I am confused. I don't know what's real or not real anymore. I rely on faith. Whatever faith you rely on, that's great. But I don't watch the news. I try not to, Mr. Carroll. Yeah, it's depressing. You know, I, 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 I see what's on Facebook because I have to because all my shows. But, you know, is that real? I don't know, man. Because now they got the well, Facebook fact checkers are saying it's not real. It's fake news. You know what? I, I don't know if it's not her, you know. Well, here's why I said that about Pontius Pilate and the truth, okay? Because there is one real truth left in this world that we can count on. We can take it to the bank. It's like money in the bank, and that is Jesus Christ. We're celebrating him today. He is the truth, the way, and the life. That's the one truth that we can hold on to in the storm. That's our ship. They, they can keep us from the waters of this world. Uh, that's what we've got to depend upon. Uh, because he is the truth. And the truth will set you free. You know, and I just said that to a few people the other night. And that's all I ever ask. Is tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you and the truth will always prevail. And it's not hard once you confess the truth. Yeah. You, you, you will feel better. You will be stress-free. You won't have that burden. You know who exactly. I'm talking to, but I'm not going to get into that subject. But ladies and gentlemen, next week, I cannot believe we're going to carry on that subject. Dark science. Dark science. Let's say, uh, yeah. let's, say uh, let's do a little prayer here. We're yes, close. sir. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, All right. In a dark subject. Lord Jesus, we come to you tonight, and we ask that you bless all of us that are here, the ones listening and watching us. Bless Chris and all of us. Uh, walk through our lives. Give us the strength and the courage we need to face the times that are coming upon us. Give us that connection to the truth, which is what you are. The truth that will stand and last forever when everything else has passed away. We know that you have the power and you have the strength to preserve us. And, and, you, as, and you alone do we trust. And that is what the one thing we have to hold on in, to in this world is you. And we ask now, Lord, that you bless us, that you guide our lives, that you bring, you send your angels to guard us and protect us in our lives and our going in and coming out. And all of our relatives and our finances and our health, we ask that you preserve us, and we place them in your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, Mr. Mr. Carroll, I, I just, you have taken another home run out of the ballpark. You know, uh, I usually don't get involved with politics or religion too much because, you know, it's very controversial. And I tell people, and I say this all the time, you believe what you want to believe, all right? That's fine. I do not tell you what to believe in or what, how, or in 
or, or Val. That's up to you. Joey says, thank you. Brenda says, wonderful show. Norma says, I'd rather know the truth, whether ugly or painful. That's well, true. Unfortunately, it's more painful and uglier than it really is than what we're actually knowing. And Joey says, amen, Mr. Dennis. Yep. So it's That's sad, it. ladies and gentlemen. So, hey, make sure you like us, subscribe to us, follow us on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Sharing is caring. Share us out. Like us, yeah, artists. Please, please. Yeah. And then and all the admins and monitors, I can't even talk. I'm so upset. Admins and mods. Uh, admins and mods. Us. And all yeah, the Facebook groups. Let us go tell live your, out there. Thank you. Tell, tell your friends about it. Like us, share us. The more people know, the more we can get this out to the people that need to know. So, I appreciate it. Sharing is sharing. That is right. From Mr. Carroll and Grizzly, from coast to coast and around the world, ladies and gentlemen, we say goodnight. Happy Easter. Take care and be safe. God bless.